Well, I would think it's a must-win game for New Zealand for the simple reason that one, if they win, they are through uh, with 13 points. And the other thing, other reason why I say that is if England, uh, I beg your pardon, if New Zealand lose this game, they, they stay at 11. And I would think Pakistan will get to 11 by beating Bangladesh. And in that scenario, Pakistan goes through for the simple reason that they have beaten New Zealand. So I think New Zealand will have to up their game. Uh, they're playing at Riverside, a uh, high-scoring game. We saw the game last time around. Uh, 330, uh, West Indies almost getting back about 318, 319. They would, they would want to win the toss and bat first. And uh, it does not, uh, does not mean that when I say bat first that you will only expect the Kane Williamson to keep getting runs. It will also be very important that the other batters come to the party. Uh, Ross Taylor, Martin Guptill, uh, Henry Nichols. Uh, it, it can't be the case that you expect Kane Williamson to score runs everyone. Must win game. Let's hope that they bring in their A game. They've, they've been to the semi-finals on a, a lot of occasions. Can they do it one more time? I think uh, it, is, it is imperative that they play uh, Jason Roy. He's someone who really brings in a lot to the table. Uh, we saw how the England side changed and batted so beautifully against England uh, once they had Jason Roy at the top. Uh, he opens up the game for you right at the top. He puts the pressure on the opposition right, right, right at the top. And I think even if it's about 70-80%, they will get him to play again. Uh, the reason I say this is, uh, after this, England does have almost a week's break. Uh, it depends on if they qualify. If they do qualify, uh, they probably will be playing on the 9th or the 11th. And we're talking about the 3rd of uh, uh, June, uh, July right now. So I would still think that there's enough time if, an, so if something does happen to Jason Roy. But having said that, first things first. Come this match, they will want Jason Roy to fire. They will want him to give them a good start. And they will for sure make him play. Unless and until... He's really, really out of, out of it and unless and until he can't really hold the bat. I thought he bowled beautifully. I thought he uh, read the wicket very well. Uh, the wicket was a bit slow and uh, let's not forget that he had three maiden, maiden overs straight up. Uh, in the Indian uh, batters didn't have much to really uh, counter him with to start with. And I thought even at the end of the innings, I thought the, with the slower balls, he assessed the wicket very well. He is not somebody who is very quick. He is not somebody who bowls at 140, 145 consistently. But he's been England's wicket taker to start with. He's been England's wicket taker in the power play in recent times. So I do believe that uh, he has a role to play, just not as a bowler. Uh, he also has a role to play as a batter who can score a bit in the end and also as a death bowler. He understands the situation very well, reads the game well, uses the slower ball, uses the short ball. And with him and Liam Plunkett and Jofra Archer, I think England have a formidable bowling attack. <music>